Welcome back to a Skewed Reviews. And this whole week, I'm doing the entire Tremors film series. And the first one was, in fact, also a viewer request. So I'm starting off with the 1990 film Tremors. Here is your trivia question for today. How do Val and Earl settle their arguments? The answer will be at the end of this episode. This film starts off in the quaint city of Perfection, Nevada. It's here where we meet our two main characters, Val McKee and Earl Bassett, who happen to be the handymen when it comes to the city of Perfection. Most of the people living in Perfection seem just like nice, normal, ordinary people, with some of them having a few interesting hobbies. There's also Rhonda, a geology student from the local college, who's looking into some weird seismographic readings. So nothing of real significance seems to ever happen in Perfection. Well, that is at least until the murders start to happen. Somehow somebody chased Edgar up a radio tower, and he stayed up there and died of starvation. Then someone mutilated old Fred, only leaving his head. All signs begin pointing to these weird snake-like creatures that are roaming around in the ground that Walter has lovingly nicknamed Graboids. But these Graboids must be pretty strong as they begin pulling people and vehicles down into the ground. And also, they must be pretty smart as they've blocked the only way out of town. However, the worst part is yet to come as they find out that these snake-like things are actually just tongues belonging to a much larger creature. They seem to have the ability to actually feel and hear vibrations through the ground, so then they come up and swallow you whole. This then causes the citizens of Perfection to get up onto the buildings to get as far away from the ground as possible. So with everyone working together, will they be able to find a way out of Perfection? And even if they do, Will the Graboids let them get out of the valley? This movie was directed by Ron Underwood, and this was actually his first feature film. This was also the movie that convinced Billy Crystal that Underwood was the right director for City Slickers. This movie was written by S.S. Wilson and Brent Maddock, and their script for this film was actually picked up due to the success of their script for Short Circuit. Wilson was the one who initially came up with the concept while he was working for the U.S. Navy in the California desert. While resting on a rock, he imagined what it would be like if something underground kept him from getting off the rock. So the original title for the film was Land Sharks. They ended up changing it due to the fact that Saturday Night Live had a sketch called Land Shark. The next title they went with was Dead Silence, but that was considered too serious, and they would eventually go with Tremors, which I think was the better choice. Now, they originally wanted it to seem like this was a serial killer movie up until the point when the construction worker gets pulled off by something. Universal, though, wanted it to be marketed as a monster movie. So this is why they ended up adding the two scenes of Rhonda almost getting attacked by something in the ground right at the beginning and what happens to old Fred. Kevin Bacon plays the role of Val in this film, and this might actually be my favorite Kevin Bacon role. But apparently Bacon did not actually like Tremors at first and only did it for the paycheck. When it first came out, unfortunately, the movie did not do very well. Over the years, though, he ended up warming up to the film and will even state nowadays that it was one of the most fun experiences he ever had. Now, there were other actors up for the role of Val McKee, including Bill Paxton, Matthew Modine, Bruce Campbell, and Ray Liotta. Fred Ward played the character of Earl Bassett, and this is definitely my favorite Fred Ward performance. Other actors that were also up for the role were Jack Palance and John Voight. Michael Gross plays the character of Burt Gummer, who is not only a fan favorite, but also the glue that really holds all of the Tremors series together. Did you happen to know, though, that his first day of filming was the day after his last day of filming the very last episode of Family Ties? The character of Burt Gummer was originally written to have someone like Chuck Norris or Clint Eastwood play him. This was the first film that Reba McIntyre appeared as an actress in. Victor Wong plays the character of Walter Chang, but they originally offered the role of Chang to Pat Morita. He ended up not being in the film, though, as apparently he requested too much money. Ariana Richards plays the character of Mindy, and apparently plays characters that tend to have really bad situations involving monsters, as only three years later, she would play the character of Lex in Jurassic Park. Amalgamated Dynamics did the practical effects for this film. This was actually their first feature film, and in my opinion, they did an amazing job. 
The original idea for the graboids was to have an outer shell and then they would retract and reveal an inner worm. Production members managed to point out how this would resemble a penis and foreskin. Luckily, they dropped that and then added in the tentacles. This also ended up saving the film a lot of money as it was low budget and having to have the large worms show up each and every time would have cost a lot of money where now they could just have the tentacle snakes show up from time to time instead. Something else that ended up saving them money as well was changing it from six graboids down to four. Now in the original script, when there was supposed to be six, the other two were going to fly off the cliff along with Stumpy. Another early concept that was taken out was the graboids were going to be able to mimic sounds. This seemed too powerful, so they cut that out. Speaking of sounds though, the ones that the graboids make would actually be used in multiple other movies, including Predator 2, Starship Troopers, Ants, Mosquito, Eight-Legged Freaks, and Kong Skull Island. If you were ever curious as to how they got the burrowing effect to work, what they did is they dragged a boat buoy behind a pickup truck. Here are some additional things in the original script you may not have known about. In it, there were two other additional characters that didn't appear in the film. Viola, a nagging, hateful old woman, and her pet Rottweiler that always barked too much. There was an additional scene at the beginning where we see old Fred and Edgar are actually good friends, but apparently this scene was too boring and it just didn't add anything to the story, so they cut it out. Here are some more things you may not have known or may not have noticed with the film. For instance, Val, whose full name is Valentine, wears a heart-shaped belt buckle because of his name. Throughout the entire film, there are only two interior sets, Walter's store and Bert and Heather's basement. Everything else is outside. Bert and Heather's license plate was Uzi for you. There's a sequence where they show that Bert really knows his gun safety, as he gives Melvin a gun that has no ammo, but once he gets the gun back, he still checks to see that the chambers are empty. Just to be funny, they had Melvin eating gummy worms at one point in the film. When the horse gets attacked by the tentacle, the horse wasn't scared. It actually just laid down like it was trained to do so. The body count for this film is 10. The population for perfection is 14 people. Do you happen to know who all 14 are? You of course have Val and Earl, Bert and Heather, Walter, Nancy and Mindy, Miguel, Nestor, Old Fred, Edgar, and Melvin are the obvious ones. So who are the remaining two? So you might think it's the doctor and his wife, but they're just recently moving into the area. Rhonda is not one of them as she goes to the college, and neither one of the construction workers live in perfection. So who is left? Because that would be all of the cast members that you see in the film. It's also not including Viola and her Rottweiler. So it's actually two people that are never seen, but are in fact mentioned at one point in the original script. These would be Melvin's parents. Now, a lot of people think that Nestor is his dad, but that's not true. Melvin's parents are actually quite neglectful, as they will on a regular basis head out to Las Vegas for a good time and leave him by himself. If you didn't know this, they actually built the Town of Perfection as a set, and it was built in two months. The movie takes place in Nevada, but it was actually entirely filmed in California. If you can't get enough of Tremors, there was actually six additional sequels, and I am of course doing reviews for all of them. In 2003, there was a television series called Tremors the Series, which did star Michael Gross as Burt Gummer. This was unfortunately not very good. In 2017, they were actually working on another television series that would have had Kevin Bacon back in it. In fact, they had a full cast and it was going to take place in perfection, but they only ended up with a 60-minute pilot and then it was cancelled. In 2002, they tried to make a video game, but that never got completed. So when it comes to the film Tremors, I love everything about this movie. I felt that the casting was perfect and everyone felt real. I love the practical effects, and I didn't want to walk on the floor when I first saw this as a child. So I'm going to give this one a 5 out of 5. If you like this film, other movies I recommend checking out are Eight-Legged Freaks, Jaws, Deep Rising, and Screamers. Time for the trivia question from the beginning of this episode. How do Val and Earl settle their arguments? They play rock, paper, scissors, and I don't know how Val loses almost every time, as Earl always throws scissors. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Askewed Reviews, and if there's a movie you'd like to see get a review, just mention it in the comments.